Amma ba'du, my dear respected brothers, viewers and listeners, today insha'Allah, we'll speak about the virtues and the speciality and the importance and the importance of preparation in the sacred month of Rajab. Rajab is about to start from tomorrow, Saturday, which is basically from tonight, 1422, the year Hijri, 1422, the month Rajab, which is the, is the month, which is two months before Ramadan. So Rajab, and then we have uh, Sha'ban, and then Ramadan. This month, Rajab, is considered to be one of the sacred months, even before the Prophet ﷺ came to the Arabs with the Qur'an and the Sunnah. The Arabs used to sanctify this month because this was a month in which they would go for Umrah. And just like the other three months, which are also sacred and sanctified, meaning they would not fight, they would not attack, they would not go out there and raid and so on. Just like Dhul Qi'dah and Dhul Hijjah and Al Muharram, this month was also sacred to the Arabs. So the reason for the other three months is known. That those three months, Dhul Qi'dah and Dhul Hijjah and Muharram, is because they are neighboring the Hajj season. So they sanctified and prohibited and agreed not to fight, not to kill, not to raid in this time to provide safety for themselves to travel to Hajj and to come back from one month to travel, one month for Hajj and one month to come back safely to their homelands. This month Rajab, however, happens to be a few months before that. And the reason for his sanctity according to them was because they used to often do Umrah in this time. But problematically, a lot of the Arabs did not respect the sanctity of this month. And the one tribe who would really uphold the sanctity of this month was a tribe called Mudar. And so the Prophet wasallam, when he was addressing the Ummah in his Hajjatul Wida', he referenced and mentioned this month as Rajabu Mudar. The Rajab which is sanctified by the tribe of Mudar. The speciality of this month is first of all that it's sacred because the Arabs have accepted it and then the Prophet ﷺ came and affirmed it. And the Qur'an also confirmed it. Allah says in the Qur'an that in That the number of months according to Allah, according to the calendar which is Islamically recognized are 12 months, which is actually the same number as the Gregorian calendar. The difference, however, is that the Islamic calendar or the Hijri calendar or the Arabic calendar follows the moon, whereas the Gregorian, Gregorian calendar follows the sun. And that's why, because the lunar years are some days shorter than the sun years, that's why we have the rotation of the Ramadan and Hajj season changing when it comes to, uh, to be compared against the normal January, February, those kind of months. And so the Qur'an is confirming the sanctity of this month. Allah says in this ayah that, فَلَا تَظْلِمُوا فِيهِنَّ أَنفُسَكُمْ Do not oppress yourselves in this month. What does that mean? The Prophet ﷺ, or the Qur'an in another ayah, in the call of Sayyidina Ibrahim والسلام, he says that the biggest of zulum is shirk. But to do any sort of sin which puts yourself at danger of adab, of punishment from Allah is an oppression upon yourself because you are destroying yourself by committing sins. And so the ayah is telling us that even in preparation for Ramadan, before we even come to Ramadan, before we even come to the three other sacred months, we should be very careful not to oppress ourselves by sinning, by, by tarnishing and destroying our, our good deeds by sinning and so on. As the Shaykh is mentioning the Nasiha in Bangla, that you know the income being halal is also a part of that. We are often concerned about, you know, our we need to do good deeds, so we pray salah, we give zakat, we give sadaqah, you know, we make dua. But then we are not so careful about our monetary exchanges, our transactions. You know, we think that this is okay. Someone may be a prayer of five salawat, and yet he will be involved in riba. This is very, very common. But we don't understand, well, we don't remember that the hadith is telling us that a person will not be able to move his feet on Yawm al Qiyamah until you have answered to Allah, where did you get your money from and where did you spend it? How did you spend your time? And so on. And so monetary exchanges and transactions and these things are extremely crucial for us to be able to get close to Allah. We must be clean on all platforms. We must be good with our fara'id, good with our muharramat, that we should be avoiding them, trying to avoid the makruhat, trying to do the sunan and the mustahabbat as much as possible. The ulama previously used to call this Rajab month the month of planting. 
planting in the month of Rajab, watering in the month of Sha'ban, and reaping the rewards in the month of Ramadan. What does that mean? If you want to plant a seed, just like we are seeing right now, the, the farmers protests in India, the farmers are very angry because 650 million people in India, their income is based upon farming. And if this is now exported to other countries, this is now the livelihoods of 650 million people. That's a huge amount of people. Their livelihoods are at stake now. That's why they're very angry and they have a right to be. They're protesting. And what Modi and his government is doing completely is inhumane. It's wrong. It's been condemned by governments and, and famous individuals. He was first oppressing the Kashmiris, oppressing the Muslims, and now his own people, regardless of faith and background, he's trying to export their jobs, export their livelihoods into other... This is completely wrong. We must condemn it. We condemn other crimes, other injustices, just like we did with Myanmar and other countries. Likewise, what Modi is doing in India is completely incorrect. It needs to be addressed, it needs to be mentioned. Right, so I came to this because I said, for, I said planting, right? Planting meaning that this is the month in which we get used to doing good deeds. We put the seeds of good deeds into it. So I get into the habit of reading Quran, of fasting a bit more, nawafil, tahajjud, nafal salah. When I, get, when I have planted these habits and I've maintained it by, by watering it, continually, you know, sort of motivating myself to continue to do it in Sha'ban, now when I come to Ramadan, I am good to do the whole of Ramadan in a good way. I'm able to, I'm strong enough, trained enough to be able to fast all of the days with full focus, full khushu' because we know, we've said it before, that when Ramadan comes, first few days are going in hunger. Other few, few days are going in, you know, hospitality and treating people and feeding people and whatnot. And so, by the time you get into the habit of it, Ramadan is already gone. Ramadan is a type of reaping the rewards. Each reward, subhanAllah, is multiplied so many times, 70 times, 700 times. This is the time to get maximum reward. And so therefore, it is important. Rajab is also important to us for various reasons. In history, so many amazing things have happened in Rajab. Despite that, there isn't a special way to worship Allah in Rajab. Some people try to make up ways of doing things, special ibadah for Rajab. This is all false and this is not authentic. There is no special ibadah for Rajab. You pray your normal salah, normal nafal, normal tilawa, normal Quran, normal dua. But you do it more if you want to. But there is no special ibadah for Rajab. Right. Some of the things that have happened in this very blessed or sacred month. First of all, you remember... In the fifth year of Bi'tha, the fifth year since the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was sent as a Prophet, the first Hijrah took place to Al-Habasha. This was a very great journey. The beginning of, uh, of immigration. The beginning of traveling for the sake of the preservation of one's faith. Led by Sayyidina Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu. And the likes of Az-Zubayr ibn al-Awwam and others. This was a historic journey that took place where they went to seek refuge and to seek protection from An-Najashi, who himself in fact died in the month Rajab in the ninth year of Hijrah. We find also that on the 27th of Rajab, as is mentioned by various scholars, is the night of Al-Isra and Mi'raj, a miraculous journey. Again, there is no specific ibadah for that night, but it's important to us. It's a historic day for us, historic time for us, because this is when we learned how to be in touch with our Creator five times a day. Ulama say that if the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went to Isra and Mi'raj once in his lifetime, even though that only happened once, but from the benefit of that journey is that he has taught us how to meet our Lord five times a day because of that one journey. How to be in touch with him in, in his presence through our ibadah, through our sujood and ruku and tilawa. And we say, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Allah is responding back. And you are saying, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, and Allah is responding back. And so the Isra and Mi'raj journey was also a miraculous journey that happened in this very uh, sacred month of Rajab. We know that the Ghazwa of Tabuk, which was the last of the Ghazawat that the Prophet ﷺ partook in before he passed away. One of the most difficult times that the Muslim Ummah has ever faced. Allah says, لَقَدْ ثَابَ اللَّهُ عَلَى النَّبِيبِ فِي سَاعَةِ الْعُسْرَةِ The time of difficulty, because it was extremely difficult, because they were facing a huge army, the Romans. And this is the expedition in which Sayyidina Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu spent alone two-thirds. Two-thirds of the expenditure of the, of the expenses of the whole expedition Uthman ibn Affan. 
That's the same uh, expedition you hear the famous story when Abu Bakr Siddiq came with everything. And Umar came with half his wealth. So this is a very historic event that happened in this month of Rajab also. And Allah forgave those who fell behind and they done a proper tawbah for it. Also the battle of Yarmouk in the leadership of Khalid and Walid, which led to the opening of Dimashq and then that followed on to opening various countries in Africa. That was also the beginning of which was in Rajab. We know also that in this month was the great reopening, the freeing of Palestine from the oppressive hands of the Crusaders. Under the leadership of the, of the teacher Imaduddin Zinki and his student Nuruddin Ahmad Mahmoud and his student Salahuddin Al Ayyubi, who were Turks and Kurds. In the year 583, they reopened Palestine and Masjid Al Aqsa from the oppressive hands of the Crusaders. For 88 years, for nearly 90 years, Masjid Al Aqsa, Palestine, there was no Adhan, no Salah, no Jumu'ah, nothing. And this man, Salahuddin Ayyub, was a scholar himself. He was a great scholar himself. He was a muhaddith. So someone came to him one day and said to him, teach us a hadith. And this hadith is called Musalsal Bil Ibtisama. That whenever you transmit this hadith, it's the sunnah to smile. He never smiled when he transmitted that hadith. So he was asked, why don't you smile? He said, how can I smile when Philistine is under the rulership and under the blockade of the crusaders? And Philistine today is under oppression even right now. The Gazans, the Palestinians, Masjid al-Aqsa. This is something that we shouldn't forget. We must continue to strive for, to campaign for the freedom and the, and the fair treatment and the justice of our beloved and our brothers, our family members, the Palestinians, inshallah.